Hi one, hope you're doing well from whatever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, on Saturday, there was a serious conflict between a member of parliament elected on a UDA ticket and the residents of Kisi County when he attempted to allege that the president has no hand in the price of fuel in this country. That whether the price is high or low, the president does nothing. He has no NSA on that. Of course, he was booed, he was heckled, and we shared that video here. But above all, William Ruto, when he stood to speak, because all this, it was happening in his presence, Ruto repeated the same thing. Of course, we know as of now, uh, from the beginning when he took over power, the price hiked. It was so much high. But they have tried to reduce, but not to the level where Uhuru was, of course, during his time, Alita was going for. He's not yet there, but he's coming down. With all this, there is now something Ruto is trying to do in his attempt to, can we say convince? It's not even convincing. It is to confuse people. This is what he's saying. That when the price of fuel is going down, he does not, there's nothing he has done. So he cannot take credit. But again, when it is going high, again, there's nothing he's doing. So he cannot take a blame. I don't know how many of you can agree with William Ruto on that statement. But I want to listen to him shortly because I also play another sound bite where Ruto was putting a blame on Uhuru Kenyatta when the price of fuel was high. A man of double standard. But listen to him on what he said yesterday, then we go to that clip. I did nothing. So, now, during campaign, when Ruto was looking for presidents, he put a blame on Huru Kenyatta when he was questioning why is the price of fuel in Uganda cheaper than Kenya. Yesterday he was saying that he don't control the oil market price, so he's not the one putting, setting the price of fuel in Kenya. But during that time, he was putting a blame on Uhuru Kenyatta. And he was using Uganda as an example. But today, He's saying that there's no any role as a president he's playing in terms of the setting the price of fuel in this country. The people telling us about Ukraine and, and, and Russia are also telling us that there is no shortage of fuel. They are also trying to blame um, oil marketers. So they are even conflicted in the reasons why we have an artificial crisis in the country. They are not sure of what to say. Is it because of the war in Ukraine or is it because of the crisis with our oil marketers? Which is which? And that goes to tell you that this crisis is orchestrated. And it is as a result of the cartels and barons who, are, who have taken over using conflict of interest and state capture in our economy. How come that fuel in Uganda 
is cheaper than fuel in Kenya. So, uh, and yet the fuel being sold in Uganda goes through, goes through Kenya. That, that tells you that uh, that kind of explanation is, is escapist and, and has no basis whatsoever. We should address ourselves to the crisis that is there in the country and the monopolies that have taken our fuel and economic sector captive. Now we are continuing with this point of discussion, but just a quick request. For those who are watching and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. To our channel subscribers, Master, thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. Now, with those two clips, one on Saturday and the other one is one year ago, where Ruto was calling for press briefing to talk about the price of fuel. We have one simple question to ask William Ruto. If he does not control the price of fuel even here in Kenya, why was he calling for press conference, press briefing after press briefing, to talk about the price of fuel and put a blame on Uhuru Kenyatta? If he don't control, then it means even Uhuru Kenyatta was not controlling. So, if he's not taking credit and a blame, why was he putting a blame on Uhuru Kenyatta and even using Uganda as an example if Ruto is not a man of double speak? Let him come out and tell us what was the meaning of that press briefing and what was the meaning of what he said while in Kisi? He was talking about a mongrel of government at one point. Where to draw mukia na kichu. Sasa saizi hata wa Kenya wamekosa kumwelewa. What kind of governance is he offering and what was he telling Kenyans during that time? Does he understand what he's doing? Is he in control? Or was it a language he was using to dupe Kenyans during campaign? But above all, we are seeing William Ruto, who is a, definitely trying to run away from responsibility because he knows very well that he has failed to lower the cost of fuel in this country. So because the prices are high, he don't want to take responsibility and take a blame. And he's discovering that he can no longer shift that blame to anyone. And what is he saying? That even if there will be a chance to take credit that the fuel price is coming down, he will not take because he has done nothing to reduce. That means even when it goes high, it cannot, he cannot take. When it goes low, he cannot take. It is all because he's planning not to even reduce the price of fuel to a level where who had put it but instead to put it high. So, Ruto is running away from taking responsibility, but nothing else. When voting happened on Finance Bill 2023, the price of fuel had been set at 8%. But there was a time when Ruto threatened the member of parliament in one of the speeches he gave. He was in Eastern. Alisema anangojea kuona yule mbunge atapiga kura kupinga wa Kenya kupata maendeleo. <laughs> but his target was on such product like fuel. That voting increased VAT on fuel from 8% to 16%. Who signed on that bill? Who signed on that bill to be an, on, on to be to be on that act? Alikuwa nani? Hakuwa William Ruto. It is William Ruto who did it. So Ruto has a say on the price of fuel. 
He can decide even to put it high or reduce. Yes, the oil marketers will set their price, but again, Kenya as a country, they need taxes. So they will put VAT on that. That means they cannot sell the same price the international oil market is setting. They will put VAT there and the price is going to change. So Ruto put VAT on that fuel, Ikapanda. Otherwise, Kamahana NSA on that. Why can't he sell at the same price where the international oil market is giving? Kama kuna anything, he's adding or reducing. So that now, no one can put a blame on him. Above all, he can even go a step ahead to do that which Uhuru was doing, subsidize. And that amua tu serikali tendipia kiwango fulani ya mafuta. Ya kwamba, ukinunua lita moja, serikali itakuwa inalipia shilingi ishirini. Kama mwishimua urutu uhuru. In every liter, 30 shillings, serikali likuwa inalipa. So, he has a say and he cannot distance himself from all this. Otherwise, atuambia ni nini alikuwa nasema kuhusu uhuru kenyata na bei ya mafuta. A man of double standards. This time around, he cannot run away from taking responsibility. Na hapa watu wakisi walikuwa mekata mchezo. Then he stood and said, oh, kwa sababu hata beya mafuta meshuka, sitaki kusema ya kwamba ni meshukisha. Siyo mimi. Because he know that the burden is still high there. Mwishimiwa Ruto aambio ukweli. Wakati wa kuchezea wa Kenya, wakati wa kudanganya wanainchi, wakati ya ukora, wongo imeisha. Ni wakati wa kuambiana ukweli. He is the one in charge. We talk about G to G. The fuel they got from UAE and Saudi Arabia. He was in charge. He had a say. He, had, he made a decision. He literally made a decision that it is G to G. But where are we? It is worse. Sasa aja kudanganya wa Kenya. Hatuta kubali. 